So this gospel can be pretty confusing, can it? Maybe startling. So three things. The principle of the gift is number one. Bury it, number two. And heaven and hell, number three. So again, we're approaching, we have one more week of ordinary time. Next week will be uh, Christ the King. And then the following Sunday, two weeks from this weekend, will be the first Sunday of Advent. So the readings are all talking about getting ready, being prepared for the time to meet the Lord. I actually love this parable, and and I've seen it at work in my own life. So let's look at the, the first point is the principle of the gift. This is something that I've heard Bishop Barron talking about many times. He was a professor of mine in the seminary, and it makes so much sense that when we give away what God has already gifted us, God blesses it, purifies it, multiplies it, and gives it back to us in ways that we never imagined. Maybe you're thinking in your own life, is is this principle true? It's kind of counterintuitive because we think if I give it away, I'm losing everything. But in the economy of God, the more we give away what he's given us, the more we offer back to him what he's given us, he says, I'll give it back to you 30, 60, 100 fold. That's the principle of the gift. It actually happens at every mass when we offer our simple gifts of bread and wine that he's already given us. He takes it, blesses it, transforms it into his own body and blood, and then he gives it back to us in this surprising way of his body, blood, soul, and divinity. Another piece that's counterintuitive here is in this gospel, we hear him say, take away the one, the one that buried his his, uh, talent, and give it to the one with 10. We'll talk about that in a minute. So let's look at this parable. So the master is going on a journey. He leaves his money with his servants as he goes away, and he's he's generous with them, and he entrusts his wealth to them. So think about this. A talent, you may say, what is a talent? At that time, a talent was their currency, and there were silver talents and gold talents. We don't know if this was silver or gold, but they say, the experts say one talent was worth anywhere from $10,000 today up to a million dollars. And so the fact that he gave five talents to one person, he could have been given them what we would say was $5 million. So this, this master is very generous, and he entrusts his wealth to his servants. So it says he gives five to one, two to another, one to a third, And this is interesting. He says, each according to his ability. Now, again, you can say, is this fair? Why would God, and and we could probably look around and we can think of people in our own lives, like, why did she get all of those talents and why didn't I get them? But if you think about it, in God's economy, we rely on one another. We need each other. And maybe the gifts that I have, others don't, and vice versa. There are many gifts that I don't have that I admire in others, but I know that God has given me certain gifts as well. Time, talent, and treasure. And what he's asking of us is to give it back to him, is offer back to him what he's already given us. And so what does the one with five talents do? And this this word struck me, and we were were doing Lectio Divina in our parish council meeting the other night, and somebody mentioned this. The word that jumped out was immediately— The man with five talents immediately went out and invested the five. Like, he didn't think about it. He just did it. And what happened? He got five more. He doubled his money. And of course, in parables, he's not just talking about money. He's talking about, again, time, talent, treasure, all of these things in our own life. Like, we're given 168 hours a week. What am I doing with those 168 hours? What am I doing with the gifts and talents and charisms that God has given me? My dream, I may have mentioned this here, is that each one of us at some point goes through the called and gifted program. Uh, It's it's a five-week course where you you learn your own charisms. 
You learn the special gifts and talents that God has given you so that you can use them for God's kingdom. Oftentimes, maybe we're doing things that aren't in our wheelhouse, and we get tired and we get frustrated. But when you're using God's gifts and talents the way He intended, it doesn't feel like work. It feels like naturally I'm, I'm loving what I'm doing. And of course, we all have treasure. We have monetary and material gifts that we can share with others as well. So do we act immediately and generously with the gifts God has given us? And the one who doubled his money from five to 10, what did the master say when he came back? Well done, my good and faithful steward. Share your master's joy. This joy strikes me because that's what heaven on earth looks like. Heaven on earth is union with God, sharing the gifts that God has given us, and experiencing a taste, a glimpse of what heaven is like. The one that was given two talents did the same thing, doubled his money, gave it back to the master. Well done, good and faithful servant. Share your master's joy. Heaven on earth. So again, the principle of the gift is that God has been generous with us. He entrusts his gifts with us. And when we give it away, it comes back to us in ways that we never imagined. You know my story of people thought I was crazy going into the priesthood, and I thought it was crazy going into the priesthood. But the more that I'd given back to God, I thought I was giving up baseball. Well, got to be chaplain for the Cubs. The more I gave up my girlfriend, I got to marry her anyway, but to my best friend. God surprises us in ways that we never imagine. Think about how God maybe has blessed you 30, 60, and 100 fold when you've given back to him the gifts he's given you. The third person, and this is the second point, is burying it. How often have we buried the gifts, talent, and treasure that God has given us? And this person really insults the master. So think about this. The master said, what happened? He said, well, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant, gathering where you did not scatter, and out of fear, I buried your talent. He had a distorted view of the master, right? The master is generous, the master is, is trusting, but he saw it differently. And if we think about that, sin distorts our image of God. You think about Adam and Eve, they were created in perfect union with God. But after sin, what did they do? They hid in fear and they didn't trust God that he was a generous God. And so sometimes God wants to heal our image of him. I remember growing up thinking God was a harsh judge and he couldn't wait for me to sin and hit me over the head with a hammer. That's not the God that we serve. And so I've had to heal that image to realize this is the image of God. Jesus is the perfect revelation of the Father who showed us what love it looks like by dying on the cross. So how do you see God? Do you hold on to the gifts that he's given you thinking, if I, if I give them away, if I'm generous with these gifts, I'm going to lose everything. I can't trust God. That's what the enemy wants us to believe. And so what did the master say to this person? It's not what we want to hear. He says, you wicked, lazy servant. Lazy is important here because this whole chapter, chapter 25 of Matthew, is all about doing something with God's gifts. Remember last week, what did we have? We had the 10 virgins, five were wise, five were foolish. The foolish ones didn't have any oil. They, they weren't doing anything with their, their faith and good works, and they were unprepared. This week, we have the, the parable of the talents. Next week, we're going to have the rest of the chapter, which is where God separates the sheep from the goats. And the criteria of the separation is, I was hungry and you gave me to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. It is really important what we do with the gifts that God gives us. Faith is important, but faith without works is what? It's dead. Faith without works is dead. And so the master takes away that one talent, gives it to the one with 10, and you can say, well, that isn't fair. But 
the one with 10 is using his gifts and talents. And that's what happens when you see someone who is generous. And I remember Bishop Sarton telling us this. He said, the happiest people I know, the most joyful people I know, are the most generous. And I believe that absolutely to be true because they're giving away what God has given them and God keeps giving them more to keep giving away. It's the principle of the gift. The unhappiest people are those who cling to what they have and they don't share. And so when we bury our gifts, the Lord says, I'm going to take it away and give it to someone who will use it. And then finally, the third point is, is heaven and hell. He says, the wicked and lazy servant was sent to the darkness outside. Hell is separation from God. God doesn't want any of, of us to experience hell. His desire is that we all are with him forever. But he gives us free will, and hell simply is separation from God. We choose it. We're not sent there. And so we can experience hell on earth when we are selfish with the gifts God has given us. The opposite is true also. What is heaven? Heaven is union with God. We can experience the master's joy here on earth, being in union with him, par excellence is in the Eucharist, and doing his will, sharing his gifts with others. And so what can we do with the gifts that God has given us in order to experience heaven on earth and ultimately with God in heaven? Bishop Hicks's view is catechesis, evangelization, and faith in action. You know, get to know Jesus. Do something in catechesis as an adult, whether it's be formed, Monday night formation, maybe a Bible, the Bible in a year, the catechism in a year. There's so many opportunities to get to know our faith better. Evangelization, share your faith with others. Don't be stingy with the gifts that God has given you. Take a risk. If you think about some of the, the greatest entrepreneurs, I'm talking in business, they took some huge risks to get where they're at today. Similarly, some of the greatest saints took amazing risks. They risked everything, and God will never let us down when we offer back to him what he's given us. And finally, faith in action. What am I doing with my time, talent, and treasure to serve God? So this week, three things to reflect on. The principle of the gift. How am I giving away what God has given to me? Am I burying that gift? Am I being selfish with the gifts that God has given me? And can I experience heaven on earth by being as generous as I can with what God has already given me? We serve a God who is generous. We serve a God who is trusting to give us gifts, and he is trustworthy for us to give back to him. One of my good friends, Father Dennis, says, we can't outdo God in generosity, but I dare you to try.